words of wisdom have been shared already, and as a gratitude, I'd like to offer a song. It's an honoring song um, to our ancestors, all of our ancestors, because they work together through us, with us, um, and we're able to connect to them, um, or else we wouldn't be here today. are 
be like a ray of the light in this world. So that is one of my, um, one of his quotes that I hold dearly, and I try to strive for that. Don't be like a flower aloft in the wind. Be firmly planted into the ground. So that speaks for itself. And this um, is one of his one of his last contributions before he crossed over. In 1915, he um, at the Ventura County um, Fair. He demonstrated a traditional plank canoe, um, which was made out of dried wood, and um, were used as our main transport, our highway, which was uh, is the west coast. So we'd go to and from the islands and up and down trading routes through the waters. And um, he, as a little kid, um, would work with the elders, his elders, um, to learn this knowledge, but in some places he wasn't allowed because it was a private society. And if it wasn't for him sneaking behind the Thule huts to hear and listen, um, we may not know some things today because of that. So. Okay. So it's all origin stories. Our ancestors um, tell of the elements first, acknowledging our elements, our directions, our connection to the earth. Wherever I go, I have slip-on shoes because I want to be able, you know, to connect to the land. And of course, you can connect in any way. But my um, my way is uh, unique, as each and every individual has theirs. Um, but it starts with our elements, and then our origin stories. For example, woodpecker in the flood. It's a story of um, the time when animals were people, and um, the uh, discussion of transformation, as um, was brought up yesterday. This is the trans transformation of animals into stone when the water levels rose. However, Makutiko, which is woodpecker, survived, only he, and um, the remnants now are fossils in, in our geologic formations. Um, the making of man's hands. Um, also, our stories tell of um, how after the flood, the discussion of uh, creating man was so important because at this time was that transformation. So we needed to bring um, man onto this land. Um, and so uh, the upper beings, had counsel and and started with their our hands and um, so there was a, an argument up in the upper world with sky coyote and um, lizard and um, sky coyote lost his argument and so we have hands like lizard today um, but these also um, these these stories talk about the transformation as well. Um, and the plan of Pion. We have a night and day. The upper world beings have um, a daily game, a hand game. Um, actually, Pion is a, is a Spanish term we, they use for hand game. Um, but the hand game is played daily. So it looks as though right now, Sun is winning because he's able to break through the clouds. Um, Sky Coyote, is on the opposing team, and when it rains a lot, Sky Coyote is winning. When um, when the sun's winning, then we have, or when the sun's losing, then we have um, strong crops, and um, the rainbows come out because of um, all of the seeds that will um, populate the ground and all the colors that they display. Sukashnech Aksi. So we ask ourselves, what is the sun doing today? The sun is what we need to watch um, because it's that, that hand game in the sky that is continuously being played. 
at the end of the year, the tally <coughs> scores, um, the scores are tallied by Moon, and she's our, our scorekeeper. She's actually visible in day and night. So she um, transcends both, both day and night, and is that neutral um, scorekeeper, and we in turn are able to um, to know if we're going to have a fruitful year or um, not so fruitful year. Um, when Sun wins, Sky Coyote has to pay him in human lives. And that's actually um, our, um, from what we've been told, we see that um, yearly. So um, that's that transformation again. Um, when Sky Coyote wins, then the sun has to pay him in seeds and in rainbows. What are we doing about food security? Um, you know, it kind of goes back to, you know, our history. Um, so the issues right now with climate change, um, we're at 34 degree latitude. So we're kind of in that middle zone. Um, we may not see the major fluctuations because we don't really experience um, the full seasons where we live. So we're, um, we're hitting it from a proactive approach to, um, to um, climate adaptation. Um, but as far as the history, our, um, our tribe has been impacted by the mission system. And um, when, during missionization, uh, there was a halt to our normal gathering practices. And, um, and then when our reservations formed, in, uh, reservation formed in the early 1900s, um, we were um, supplied by government, USDA government issued food. And so our health um, started declining, which I'm sure you're all aware of, and this is, you know, preaching the fire here, but that is really where it started with us. And so what we're trying to do is implement other programs to really nurture that in our children. Our children are, um, are affected by diabetes and poor diet, and it's a really difficult cycle to break. And so I work on the local level. Um, I currently work um, in our environmental department part-time. I do a lot of volunteerism. Um, I work with our, um, our health clinic and do volunteerism there um, because not only do we need the um, food, the wellness and balance, health, but also um, we need to be educated and educate our youth as well. So, um, so we have um, some of our, our the things that we are actually doing now are native plantless. Like currently, I'm working on a native plantless, um, and it's funny because you go out and you know the plants by their traditional use, but I'm learning how to identify them from a Western science perspective. So learning how to identify them. Um, inside through scientific names and um, and data entry and all that stuff, which I'm not a secretary and I didn't really go to school to you know for all this kind of stuff, you know. So it's really interesting because I'm new to this, but I'm a very involved community member, and whatever it takes. If it means we do talking circles, so that's what I do. If it means um, modifying a career. I had, um, I did go to school for radiologic technology, um, and I also went to school for um, archaeology. Um, our site preservation, our elders are in charge of our site preservation, and they needed help. And so I went to school to learn the language of um, archaeology, so that I could transform and create um, that bridge from for our sacred sites and archaeologists. 
and I got a lot of flack for that. Um, but I think it's really good to be able to speak that common language in order to be heard, and sometimes you have to. You have to change um, in that to really understand, you know, the other side so that you can find that agreement. Um, landscaping restoration efforts, which you'll see. Um, seed collection. What's really amazing is um, the process of seed, seed collection. You know, when we plant, we offer prayer, and it's usually in a group form. There's a group of us together. Um, and um, we've also incorporated um, community garden. And the community garden is um, a demonstration garden that not only is growing our food um, and educating our youth and in turn reaching to our elders and their and the parents of the youth, but also serve as um, bank stabilizers and erosion control. We currently have a, um, a creek and riparian area that is in balance. Um, it's actually fairly healthy, but um, our riparian areas um, need more mid-story. There's like high story, low story, but there's no mid-story. And so what's happening is um, we have um, a lot of erosion due to fluctuation in water levels. And so um, our raised beds also demonstrate ways that we can do base stabilization as well as um, erosion control and um, site preservation, most importantly, um, because where we're at, everything is site. I mean, this whole, this whole island is site um, because of our inhabitants. So um, it's really difficult to, to, for me, to work directly in the ground because I know it's, I know it's there. Um, so, so I'm teaching our youth um, to not have to. Even though our ancestors did, um, we weren't really farming community. But um, but it's just it's just very important in order to share that message of site preservation, especially now, because all, all of our archaeologists really want to dig up and publish, and and it's it's a it's a struggle. So um, in our department programs, um, we offer nutritional um, and wellness um, with our health clinic. We um, invite a lot of departments to come and share. Um, I think the interdepartmental relationships are so imperative. They're so important because um, they're familiar faces and also um, they may be open to sharing. And that's one thing that I've always told and really shared with my own kids as well as the children of our community is if you know where to go, if something, um, to know where to go or to know that you can speak to someone if you need to. Um, our youth, as um, a lot <coughs> of other communities, are facing a lot of um, distraction right now. And we may be focused, however, we need to set that example for our youth because they are our future leaders. Especially, it seems like 13 to 24, there's just this big play of um, trying to find themselves and their connections. And so we try to incorporate a lot of cultural programs that really target that age group. Um, May, uh, men and women. So we have men and women talking circles, um, cultural programs on a weekly basis, and um, and cooking workshops and things like that, bringing the garden to the table. So this is actually um, an entry in SEBA. It's California Indian Basketry Association. Um, this here. Um, is a um, Juncus acutus um, basket that I was able to make with our restoration Juncus. So uh, we were doing a community planting and restoration and this was one of our very first entries of restoration um, um, 
basketry. So our traditional basketry with, with uh, that restorative plant. Here's an example of one of the lists. I have actually an Excel, Excel spreadsheet, um, data sheet, but then this makes it look really nice too. But this is a different uh, format. But um, it's basically taking the picture, trying to identify it in all four seasons, and then um, identifying the blooming. So one of our, our, our main issues where we're at that we're seeing more and more are our plants are blooming three to four months ahead of schedule. So the chances of aborted seeds are greater. So they're not viable seeds. <coughs> and you have to really pick, pick through, so it's, it's difficult. But also our cultural use, uh, wildlife benefits as well. This is an example of an interpretive landscape, um, and we actually converted a lawn space. This was one of the very first projects as I was coming into our um, environmental office. I only work maybe 20 hours a week there, um, but I also work for culture department, cultural educator, and I also work for the elders for site preservation. Um, and so, converted the lawn to native plant. And this is it now. And so, it originally was about 25,000 gallons per year, and um, we were able to, to uh, reduce the water usage by, um, 22. So it's, it's amazing. And it's all native. This is a rainwater harvesting. So um, these are rain collection barrels. We don't really get a lot of rain water um, per se. However, we do have a reverse osmosis system that we've incorporated into our tribal offices. And um, for the reverse osmosis, there is water um, waste of about a gallon her, um, and so what we do is it actually collects and we're able to, <coughs> with the usage of um, that break room space, we're able to water this garden that wastewater. And then seed collection, the kids get involved too. And then this is a couple of our munchkins having fun in the garden. And it's all about their faces. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing this. This is why we're here, is for that. And to know that they, they don't have Twinkies in their hands and they don't have, you know, um, you know, the potato chips or the Cheetos, they're going for the good, wholesome food. Even though these are not traditional to us, if they can understand the life cycle, they'll have respect for our native plants as well. And we do have tubers, we do have dig digging sticks, and it's, it's a slow process, but it's doable, we're doing it. So this is a compost bin that they were able to um, design and paint, and then we also have, you know, our little small shovels and, and uh, things. Composting, understanding science, mathematics, and applying. And this, um, we actually were able to turn over one of the planting beds for um, native plants. And so, even though we have native plants in the landscape, I wanted them to be able to plant their seeds and know um, the life cycle of our native plants in a controlled environment. And then Garden to Table Workshop, this was an actual cooking class, and we started in the garden, and then we worked into the kitchen. That's me. And then this is not Grace. She is now our matriarch, our, our, our matriarch, our, our grandmother of grandmothers of grandmothers. And uh, we're processing our acorns from our area. Um, and yes, we did have to have some people come in to show, you know, this process in a, a uniform way because some people knew part of the process, but maybe not the entire thing. And then also, as I, I showed earlier in the slide, um, the Tamol. We have a Tamol journey every year from the mainland to the islands. 
It's about, gosh, I don't even know. Uh, it can take anywhere from six hours to 12 hours, depending on, on the channel. Um, it's a major um, trading route. There's China barges that are coming up and down. Um, but what's amazing is that we are currently working with NOAA, um, MLPA, Marine and Protection Agencies, um, as well as um, EPA. We've had some amazing um, EPA support. Um, and I also have a video which I don't think we have time for, but it's amazing. It talks about, um, just a, a quick overview, about our, um, our solar panels on our, um, and how our solar planners, sol solar panels on our um, Indian health clinics and how we're um, reducing our energy costs, reducing our carbon footprint. We also have biofuel system. Uh, we've converted um, about five or six vehicles, diesel vehicles on veg oil and we're recycling our, um, our veg oil from our casino and, um, and using that. So we've actually received quite a few awards. Um, 10, 2000, actually 2007 Green Award from Santa Barbara County, 2009 Green Business um, Certification from Santa Barbara County, 2009 Environmental Achievement Award by the U.S. EPA to July, uh, 2010 Waste Reduction Award, California Integrated Waste Management Board, and 2010 Waste Wise Certification in U.S. EPA. So we, um, you know, to get more of an intimate um, uh, <laughs> Uh, display of some of those in action. I do have this, and I'll be here tomorrow too. Um, so maybe I'll bring my laptop for you. Those of you that are interested, I have some flyers and stuff. Um, so this is my home garden, and actually, it took me maybe two and a half years. I approached the, the environmental um, office and said, "You know what? I want to participate." They're like, well, what would you like to do? I'm like, well, I'll volunteer. What do, you, what do you have for me to do? They're like, well, we really don't have anything right now. And I thought, hmm. And this was probably 2008. And I said, well, that's got to change. So I was all geared up. I'm like, I'm going to do this. So I just built my own garden at home, worked out the kinks, and then when it was time they get they gave us to go, we just assembled it and um, and we actually just recently <coughs> received a grant for the Northern California Indi um, Indian Development um, Council and we're expanding our garden by 200 feet, which is a lot for us. I mean, because we have a really small space. Our reservation itself is max 122 acres. So we're really small. And then this is my son. Pachinok Kiani Wille by Pachinok Kiani Wille. And that is that we will forever endure. He is um, currently working out on a village site that has been impacted by Chevron. Um, he has been working for the last two months. Um, as a native monitor because of the oil and the petroleum pipelines that leached out. Um, they were old and decayed, and so um, so it's really affected the land, and that's what he's dealing with right now. And he's 19, he'll be 19 this week. So I think, you know, just nurturing that in all of our children so that they have that power and that strength within themselves to light the world. 